fellow bakers. My name is Chris Dresbeck and I have 15 loaves of Irish soda bread to make for St. Patrick's Day Festival tomorrow with the Knights of Columbus. So I thought I would show you how to make it. It is super simple and um, doesn't need any rise time, so let's give it a shot. We're gonna start with three cups of flour. You can use all-purpose flour or a combination of all-purpose and whole wheat flour. I'm gonna be using just a little bit of sprouted rye flour just for a little bit more texture. So there's three cups of all-purpose flour, and I'm gonna use a half a cup of sprouted rye flour. Sprouted flours tend to be a little bit more digestible, but they also add a nice amount of texture to it. To that, we're gonna add one tablespoon of baking powder. I'll just level that off. One teaspoon of baking soda, for which the bread is named. One teaspoon of salt, I'm using a sea salt. I'm gonna add one third cup of granulated sugar. If you don't like it to be sweet, you can always take it out or leave just a little bit in there. Um, I like the texture that it creates. I'm gonna use just a little bit of caraway seed, again for flavor, and a handful of craisins. You can use currants, I just couldn't get any. Um, or you can reuse raisins, or you can just leave it out. And we're just gonna stir that together. And then we're gonna add two cups of buttermilk and one egg and a quarter cup of melted butter. So I'm gonna get my gloves on so we can mix it because like all good bakers, mixing by hand makes life a lot easier. You can feel for lumps and you can get an idea of if you need to add more flour if it's too dry, if it's too wet. So let's go ahead and get our egg in the milk, into the buttermilk. Buttermilk reacts with the baking soda, helping it to give it leavening where you would normally use yeast. Um, in this case, the acid and the base mix together to help leaven the bread. I'm just stirring that egg into the buttermilk. Just beating it together. We're gonna pour that right in a well in the center. We're gonna add our melted butter. It's a quarter cup of melted butter, or half a stick. Then we're gonna use our trusty hand and just start stirring. Just stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. If it seems too loose, where it's not pulling into a ball, I'm gonna tilt that down a little bit, where it's not turning into a ball, then you can go ahead and add a little bit more flour. And you'll know, because it'll be super wet, and you don't want it to be overly wet. It should be moist. Um, but not to the point where it's like a batter. I mean, you don't want it to be super, you know, like pancake batter. You want it to be uh, more like a very wet uh, bread dough. So, at this point, I think it's a little bit wet. You can see it's kind of gloppy, um, which is normal. But we're going to start with just a quarter cup more flour. And you'll be surprised how much that'll tighten it up. So we're just going to sprinkle that over the top and stir that in. And that should just about do it now we can start seeing a ball come together. And once you can get that ball come together, you are good to go. Then we divide it in half. And I have a pan all prepared. It's lined with some nonstick foil, but you can use parchment paper or a cookie sheet that's been sprayed and dust it with a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick. You're just gonna mound it up into two balls. It will spread out nicely so you don't have to worry about shaping it perfectly. You can just add your little globules on there. Mm, doesn't want to come off the, the, there we go. So we've got our two globs. We're gonna dust it with a little bit more flour on top. That just gives it a nice coating on top as it bakes. And I will show you what the finished product looks like. So I have some that I did earlier. So this is what our bread looks like when it's done. It's got a nice golden crust. You can see the patches of white where the flour hit it. It's not a terribly thick loaf. If you like it thicker, you can put it into a loaf pan and make an actual loaf bread. I tend to like it a little more rustic and a little bit um, flatter. So we just smear it with some Kerrygold butter and eat it with your corned beef. I hope you try the recipe. I hope you love it. Have a very happy St. Patrick's Day. Don't forget the beer.